A Nelson named Paul met a Matson named Jean. Both were part of a theater show. This Paul had some puppets and Jean had a van and a tape player ready to go. They were known as the Pied Puppet Players at first, but soon found a much better name. And known as the Pup, they performed here and there seeking notice, applause, and acclaim. In many ways, Paul was a fine puppeteer and an excellent teacher was he. His death was a loss to the puppetry world and a grief to the young company. But a Tobin named Betsy joined a Jean, and the pup got interested in conservation. The Department of Energy gave them a grant for a puppet TV presentation. Tim Noah wrote songs for the energy tale, Conservation Cannot Be Ignored. Put on a sweater, turn down the heat. Insulate your house, wear slippers on your feet. Put up storm windows, buy some weather strip. Shut off the faucet, be sure it doesn't drip. Drip, drip, drip. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I know that we can save energy. Yes, we can. Turn off the gizmos when they're not in use. Shut off the lights, say, drink electric juice. <laughs> Don't drive your car if you can take the bus. Cause saving fossil fuel, we know it's up to us. To us, to us, to us, to us, to us. Yes, we can. The Ptarmigan aired on four TV stations, and Tim won an Emmy Award. But Betsy decided to globetrot to France to develop her puppet career, so Jean and the Seattle Pup had to find another adept puppeteer. Joan King, as it happened, was then at loose ends. Her partner had recently split. Her kids all in school and time on her hands, King and Matson might be a good fit. So it was decreed then, a 30-year merger. Jean directed and wrote every play. Joan King was the artist. She made all the stuff, never getting in each other's way. They were featured at young authors' meetings, and many a puppet convention interacted with MOHAI and KIRO and schools too numerous to mention. Pinocchio, do you still tell lies like you used to when you were much younger? Tell lies? Oh, no, I never tell lies, no. Oh, Pinocchio. The Seattle Pup also worked with a group of lifers confined at Monroe. These prisoners made their own puppets and props, wrote the script, and enacted the show. The Pup owes big thanks for the loyal support of the King County Library groups, who scheduled shows, workshops, and classes. Then Joan built shows for their own puppet troops. shows get awards if they're deemed excellent, and the pup's very proud to announce it received a citation from Unima for its production, The Return of the Bounce.
So, Mrs. Button helps Jiggles get his bounce back, and they become star performers in the Million Dollar Circus. The Seattle Pup produced numerous shows, documentary to fairy story. A challenging play had a gay 90s theme, the saga of grime and of glory. The Pup opted mainly for hand and rod puppets. Of course, they were always effective, but there were times shadow puppets were used to achieve a different perspective. Joan and Jean found themselves on a lot of committees. They were officers, gophers, and such. They organized, edited, planned, and recruited. What they didn't do wasn't much. They worked for the region and for P of A, the national organization. While Joan was hand puppet consultant for years, Jean's duty was script consultation. A king known as David was married to Joan, a boring man, skillful and bright. He made a great stage for the performing pup, a traveling gem and a touring delight. The puppets refused to stay home in Seattle. They journeyed to Spain, Pakistan, to Canada, Mexico, Kuala Lumpur. Six times they went to Japan. The pup also managed to host other groups, puppet companies from other nations, not only enlarging the puppet horizons, but building good foreign relations. Jean's college degree was in theater arts. To be a playwright was her aim, and a book that she authored was finally published, Playwriting for Puppets by Name. A favorite show in the pup repertoire was about a small mouse family. There was Gouda and Edom, the mom and the dad, and Roquefort, their sweet progeny. Since Christmas means goodies and fun and delight, the little mouse can hardly wait, but becomes disappointed crestfallen and blue when his Christmas dreams evaporate. Son, I'm afraid we can't have a Christmas like we told you about. But, but why not, Dad? But a pack rat arrives. Down the chimney he comes, has a pack, and his sweater is red. He's covered with soot, and he says, Ho, 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 the day has been saved, enough said. KVOS offered the space and the gear for a Rat Before Christmas production. The pup was responsible for puppeteers, the set, props, and puppet construction. Lumen Cold and Camilla B. Portuguese were recruited and signed up to star. Rat aired seven times on five stations and is still available on ZCR. Clum? Is that a wooden clum? What, kid? Get it right I'm or sorry. I'm going to spank you. I'm sorry. I... Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right outtake on it. That's an outtake. <laughs> it sounds so wonderful. I can hardly wait. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. mark that as, you know. Okay. As cute. As real cute. Real cute. And cut. Cut. <laughs> you know, if puppetry wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. And I don't think they would either because it's too much work. Yeah. King and Matson considered themselves very lucky to have worked with a number of peers who have shared with them wisdom and puppetry skills, camaraderie throughout the years. Now, ovations and kudos to all puppeteers. May their companies be flourishing. And hats off to the puppets, wherever they are. Be they hand, shadow, mouth, rod, or string. 